sons of him who built the valleys and plains. Praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he brings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, it is the fourth Sunday of Easter. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the gate for the sheep the way of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the gate for the sheep, the way to true and lasting peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the gate for the sheep, the way to union with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my soul he guides me along the right path for the sake of his name I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death. No evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days I'm ending. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. 
He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, glory to God. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You cannot help but hear right now on the news stories about the coronavirus, all the information that is about that. It dominates our news cycle right now. It dominates a conversation. It's an experience that is not only personal and communal around our neighborhood, but also in the larger area of our state our nation, and even internationally. It dominates our attention right now. And as we hear about it on the news, or even speak about it one another, we have facts that are around this experience. We have opinions about this experience. And we have analysis as well. We have been through this experience for over a month now. And it is a lot. We realize that over so much time, that actually it can seem to dominate our experience. What we don't want to let it do is dominate our spirit. If it dominates our spirit, then what happens is that we can go a few ways. We can be led to bad behaviors. We can be led to rebel against it as a way of fighting it, a 
against our own safety or the safety of others. If it dominates our spirit in other ways, we could respond and go to despair, thinking that this is the greatest reality there is, that there's nothing that can dominate it. It could be tempting to go either way. What is best to do, though, is that with all this information that we have, is that we just let it reside on the side of our mind. Let it reside there. We know that it's there. We know what it is. Maybe we want to learn something new. And we realize that we are called to good judgment in response to it for our own safety and the safety of others, for the common good. But something that we should not do is let it dominate our spirit, as if the experience around it is the only voice that we hear. But rather, we realize that if we go deeper, that there is a better voice. There's a loving voice. If we set this experience of the coronavirus on the side of our mind, we can go to a deeper voice that is inside of us, that calls out to us. And it is the voice of the Good Shepherd, the voice of Jesus, our Savior. We can listen to this voice. And how do we hear him? There are some ways. I want to recommend a couple of them for you. The first one is to read the Gospels. Pray the Gospels. Pray Gospel stories. And the words of the Good Shepherd speaking in those gospel stories are words that are being spoken to you. They are words of our loving Savior for us all. They are words of a good shepherd calling out to his sheep to come follow him. They are words of a loving shepherd calling to us to be faithful to him and to follow him. Read the Gospels. Pray the Gospels. And listen to his loving voice. Here's another way. And that is that in our sacramental life as Catholics, we believe in the sacraments because the sacraments express in this world an invisible reality. And that invisible reality is God's world. In our own visible reality around us, through our senses, we hear the invisible reality of God. Through the sacraments, we hear the voice of the loving shepherd for us. I have two examples for you. You know them. You're familiar with them. You've heard them before. In the Eucharistic prayer, we have a place in this prayer called the Words of Institution. And in those words, the priest takes the bread and then bows down and says these words, which you know. As he, he bows down to the bread and says, this is my body, which is given up for you. Now, those are not the priest's words. They're not words that come from the priest or belong to the priest. The priest gives voice to them, says them. But actually, if you listen to them, listen to them as the voice of the Good Shepherd. It is the loving voice of Jesus, giving himself for us, for our food, for our salvation. This is the Good Shepherd feeding us 
with his life so that in the gospel it says that we may have life and that we have it to the full. That is, we have it through him. And indeed, as we feed on his body and we drink his blood, even as we do so spiritually, we take his life into us and it gives us life. That's the first sacramental example. Here is the second. When you go to the sacrament of reconciliation, and after we go and we have, we, and when, while we are there, and when we confess our sins after we do so, and we are given a penance, we admit contritely that we have sinned and we express our sorrow. The priest then says these words, I absolve you. That prayer of absolution is not the words just of the priest. It's not the words only of the priest speaking. The priest didn't make up those words. But rather, those words that we are forgiven, I absolve you, is the voice of the Good Shepherd with the desire to bring us back into the fold, speaking that we are forgiven. When we go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation and we admit with our own voice of our own sin, we also hear through the voice of another, the voice of the Good Shepherd, speaking that we are forgiven, that we are loved. We can hear many voices in our experience. As we look around at our experience, sometimes we realize that in this world, that we can live in a fearful and dark place. Our life is not always pleasant. Sometimes it's difficult and we have sacrifices that we have to make. But the difficulty, the darknesses, those places cannot dominate our experience. They don't speak of everything of what our reality is. There is a real voice, a powerful voice, more powerful than it all, that is one of the Good Shepherd that promises us life in abundance. And as good dedicated people who follow, seek to follow him. We seek to hear that voice. Pray the Gospels. Listen to his holy word. Listen to the Good Shepherd who promises abundant life for us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Just as we know the voice of the Good Shepherd, we trust that God knows our voices and responds to our prayers. So we gather together our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that we may be a living witness to the need for repentance individually and collectively, always returning to the Good Shepherd who calls us each by name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For nations at war and for all people affected by violence, that leaders may find a way to bring justice and peace to their lands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For health care workers and all who are on the front lines of the pandemic, especially those in positions of vulnerability as they work to serve their neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who respond to the voice of the Good Shepherd, calling them to help shepherd the flock, for ordained and lay vocations among God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have suffered physical, mental, or emotional trauma, that they may find relief and comfort through the assistance of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have wandered far from the fold, that they may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and be open to responding in hope and wonder, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, especially Merle Waldrop, father of Daniel Waldrop, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Loving God, like sheep who find a home with their flock, help us to find our home in you. Grant this in all our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts. We pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, then so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command and form, by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he who by his, whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this Mass is ended.